Governor William Claiborne, governor of the territory of Oregon, New Orleans, an agreement giving Livingston and Fulton the same exclusive privilege monopoly on the Mississippi River they owned on the Hudson. The 18-year Mississippi River monopoly was secured April 19, 1811. The monopolies, in effect, required other steamboat operators to pay Fulton and Livingston a royalty or see their steamboats confiscated. Fulton and Livingston formed the Mississippi Steamboat Navigation Company in 1809, taking Nicholas Roosevelt in as a third party. Roosevelt was appointed overseer of the Mississippi River monopoly. The company planned to build steamboats and operate them on the Ohio and Mississippi rivers in three separate trades. The first between New Orleans and Natchez, the second between Natchez and Lowell, and finally, in the event the first two proved practical and profitable, they would open trade between Lowell and Pittsburgh. In anticipation of their planned Ohio-Mississippi River adventure, Fulton asked Roosevelt to make a voyage down the Ohio and Mississippi to survey the physical as well as the political conditions and to study the feasibility of building and running steamboats on these western waters. Fulton, who kept meticulous notes and expense records, noted that he advanced Roosevelt a sum of $600 for this voyage. In May of 1809, Nicholas and his wife Lydia traveled to Pittsburgh bought a flatboat, provisioned it with all the comforts for a six-month voyage they would make to New Orleans. Mrs. Roosevelt described her the new home as a huge box containing a comfortable bedroom, dining room, pantry, a room in front for the crew with a brick fireplace where the cooking was done. The top of the boat was flat with seats and an awning. The crew consisted of a pilot, three hands and a male cook. This is Lydia Latrobe Roosevelt's maid went along. <laughs> Nicholas purchased the latest edition of Zadok Kramer's book, The Navigator, which contained maps and gave detailed directions for navigating the Ohio and Mississippi rivers, including descriptions of the settlements and towns along the rivers. For instance, the Navigator describes Wheeling in 1809. Wheeling Island, about a mile long, mile 96, channel on the left side. At the upper end of the island, keep pretty close to the left shore until you see the town. Then bear towards the island to avoid some logs near the left shore. After passing the town, keep near the middle of the river. The town of Wheeling is described. Wheeling fronts the Ohio on a high gravelly bank. Opposite the middle of the island and immediately back of the town is Wheeling Creek Hill. In consequence of the hill which crowds the town close to the bank of the river, Wheeling has but one street. The town has about 115 dwellings, 11 stores, two potteries and stoneware, a market house, a printing office, and a library. The mail stage arrives here twice a week. Unlike Pittsburgh, boats can descend from this place in all seasons of the year. Boats and other necessary provisions can be had at short notice. The Roosevelt drifted down the Ohio with Nicholas studying the currents and river depths. He found at Louisville the falls of the Ohio, which required an experienced paddle pilots to traverse the falls during low water. These pilots kept a detailed account of the number of boats and the amount of products they piloted over the falls. Gaining this information was essential to Roosevelt's future enterprise. After spending three weeks at Lowell, they descended the falls and continued on their journey. And this was before any dams and pools of water. Can you imagine going over that in a boat? After spending three weeks at Lowell, they descended the falls, and Lydia noted they encountered many rowdy keelboat men, which made them uneasy when they would awake in the morning to find one tied up along their flatboat. Could you imagine waking to see the likes of Lewis Webster or Mike Fink 
who were working on keel boats at that time. One night as their boat lay tied to the riverbank, two Indians boarded the boat, calling for whiskey, which Roosevelt was obliged to give them. He said to save his skin. Upon reaching the Mississippi River, Nicholas had traversed the Ohio River 1,132 and a half miles, passing 98 islands. He had another 695 miles on the Mississippi before reaching Natchez, the next major town. 